being left behind with a thick chunk of epinuclear sheet can sometimes prove to be very bothersome. And I like to present three case scenarios in which this happens. In the first case, my mistake is that I perform hydro dissection at a much deeper plane than required. Now we find that in this case, I don't create a cortical cleavage hydro dissection, but inject the fluid somewhere between the epinucleus and the cortex. And the net result of this blunder is that at the end of nucleus disassembly, I'm left with a very thick sheet and shell of the epinucleus. The problem with this epinucleus shell is that while you try to grasp the edges in order to gain hold and to pry it off the posterior capsule, you will only end up trimming the edges and leaving behind the thick plate. The second major problem with the epinuclear shell is that it is totally transparent and if you are not careful, you may end up missing it and that could lead to a thick white opacity on the first post-operative day. Now the technique which you can see is, pro is not the ideal technique by which the epinuclear shell is to be managed. What you see is an attempt at a total haphazard way of removing the epinuclear shell and trying to aspirate it in this particular fashion can predispose you to getting problems like zonular dialysis or a posterior capsular rent. And even though I succeed, I have put myself at great risk for removing this epinuclear shell. An easier way to do this is in this particular case, or case number two, where once I try to get hold of the epinucleus shell and catching hold of one of the fringes, I'm actually able to curl the epinucleus shell. However, the hold is not good enough or the plate is not stiff enough to come out of the capsular bag. And hence I pass a Sinsky hook underneath it and bend it at its back. Another case in which the epinucleus center is rising which prevents me from grasping hold of the edges of the epinuclear shell. In this case, I am pressing down the center of the epinuclear sheet so that the whole thing folds on itself, which is just opposite to the previous case. And I am able to completely remove this epinuclear plate. This is the technique which is most recommended if you are confronted with an epinucleus plate or epinucleus shell. And the best way in order to float the epinucleus shell out of the posterior capsule and into the safe zone is by visco dissection. Methyl cellulose is preferred and using a viscoelastic cannula just like in a hydro dissection you go underneath the edge of the capsular axis and inject the visco. The higher viscosity of the viscoelastic will make the epinucleus to peel away from the capsular bag and present itself in the center. And then switching over to a FACO handpiece set in the epinucleus mode, this epinucleus shell can be easily removed.
And finally, what I'd like to say is that prevention is definitely better than cure. And the best way to prevent an epinucleus shell from happening is to do a proper cortical cleavage hydrodissection that was described by Dr. Howard Fine. Using a 26 gauge bevel cannula, cannula is carried underneath the edge of the rexus. The anterior capsule is slightly tented up. The cannula is pushed towards the equator of the bag and a small aliquot of fluid is injected with sufficient force to create the cortical cleavage hydrodissection. If you have successfully managed the cortical cleavage hydrodissection, you will find that at the end of nucleus management, the capsular bag is pretty empty of epinuclear material and you just have some stray cortex to wash away.